Well, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I moved to Washington about three and a half years ago from Alabama. And um, when I did my fellowship in Boston, um, although I did my training in Cincinnati, I was first introduced to kids with lead poisoning. I'm like, lead poisoning? Well, then I moved to Boston and had the first part of my career in New England. And just about every child had an elevated lead level. And then when I moved to Alabama, I didn't think I'd see lead poisoning, but oh, it's there. And then I moved to Washington State and didn't think I would see much lead poisoning. And when I was interviewing for my job here in April of 2016, one of the top stories on the news <laughs> as I was getting ready for my interview was about lead poisoning in children. So um, it's been a very interesting journey. And so I'm gonna put my lead poisoning uh, hat on because I think it's a very, very important uh, public health model of prevention and how we as pediatricians can prevent um, this poisoning. It is a poisoning and it's probably the number one environmental poison that we have the most conclusive evi evidence um, about its adverse effects on children, on the developing brain, um, as well as pregnant females and its effect on the fetus. Um, I did receive funding from Public Health Seattle King County to develop this presentation through their CDC um, lead grant. Um, the Poison Center actually has uh, a grant with uh, King County to do community outreach and teaching on um, lead poisoning uh, in King County. So this funding, I received some of the funding through the Poison Center and I developed this talk. So the objectives today are to understand risk factors for lead exposure in children, including sources of lead, uh, to understand the adverse health effects and toxicity of lead in children, and to describe Washington State focused lead screening guidelines and reporting. These are some of the abbreviations you'll see in my slides, which I believe will be posted and, and certainly can be be used uh, by anybody. Um, with the elevated blood lead level, my definition, and we'll talk about this, greater than or equal to five micrograms per deciliter. So these are three scenarios, and I used to go to a lead clinic in Boston as part of my fellowship every Monday morning for three years. And um, again, I had uh, uh, some lead consultations in Alabama. I was their state consultant. Um, and we get calls at the Poison Center about lead too, but I'm also gonna tell you about a lot of other great resources that we have in Seattle I'm so grateful for with the Pediatric Environmental Health Specialty Unit uh, at UW, and this is falling off of me. Okay, so one-year-old presents for well childcare, you do a capillary blood lead level and it's eight micrograms per deciliter. So what do you do with that? Case two, a two-year-old presents for well child care and as part of your screening, you do a capillary blood lead level and it's 90 micrograms per deciliter on your point of care machine or wherever you, however you um, assess that. And the, but the child is asymptomatic, no concerns. And then you have a very different scenario. A four-year-old with autism presents with abdominal pain and constipation, and mother reports that he is eating the banister in their 100-year-old house. Venus blood lead level is 72 micrograms per deciliter, and that's his x-ray, uh, which shows paint chips throughout his abdomen all the way down to his rectum. What do you do? Actually, the last scenario, in my opinion, is probably the easiest scenario in terms of what do you do. And the first two scenarios, I think, are certainly the most common ones that as general, that general pediatricians face. Um, and so we're going to talk about uh, this. So a few basic facts about childhood lead poisoning. Lead is an environmental toxin that has really conclusive and extensive scientific evidence about its human toxicity. There are other environmental uh, toxicants, in my opinion, where we are just starting to see the emergence 
of, of really conclusive scientific evidence about human toxicity, and especially in children. Hey guys, thanks for watching. To continue, please log in or create an account for free. Thank you for your support.